this is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by some of the creative folks behind Entanglement, which is playing here at SIF 2017. Uh, we got Jason Filiatrope. Filiatro. Filiatro. Oh, uh, you you messed it up. You yeah. just asked. I already, I already screwed up. Uh, Jason James. Yes. And Amber Ripley. Yes. Unofficial Jason 3, I guess we <laughs> W. Um, Maybe we're Amber's 2 and 3. Mm, yeah. I like it. Um, so, Entanglement is a story of a man who's trying to find where he went wrong in his life and is sort of... Um, caught up with a woman during this process of searching for it. Uh, the first thing, I guess this is probably going to start with you, so I'm going to start with the microphone, is with an idea like this, it feels like it could go in a million different directions. I mean, it could be very serious. Um, it could be super comedic. How do you sort of go about deciding what you think the right tone is for a story like this? I mean, if you watch the movie, I kind of didn't decide. I mean, it sort of went in, <laughs> went in all those directions to a certain degree. Um, I, in the end, I mean, it was just about what the truth of it is, what what feels honest in that moment, and and you know, this is very much a script that writes itself into a corner, and so a lot of it is like <laughs> knowing where it's going. There's you know, it you sort of start to funnel down, and your options start to cut themselves off, and you there's only one direction. It's you know, and I I kind of like movies that that feel like they could go anywhere and then eventually you start feeling them inevitably heading towards a conclusion and and that sort of runaway train feeling is is kind of what I enjoyed about it. That's an interesting sort of perspective to come in as like director or producer. Um, is that something that was exciting that you guys wanted to sort of tackle and sort of say oh I have a vision of how we could approach this or like how, how, how do you sort of come to something like that that could go in any number of directions when he writes it like that? Yeah, I think, you know, the script is, there's a lot going on and there's some amazing visuals and, um, and how do you kind of bring it all together and have it make sense and have it feel believable. And to me, it's, you know, in anything you're doing is trying to find the honesty and the truth in all of these scenes. Um, but also, um, the exciting thing for me about that script is, um, is perspective. When I look at a script, I always think about what's the perspective of this movie. And with this film, because of Ben's psychosis, we really see things through his point of view. And um, because of his psychosis, you can, you can do a lot with camera work, with visual technique, with lenses and, and, uh, and focus, depth of focus. And, and, and all of that is really exciting and fun to play with. But at the heart of the story is just trying to find the truth and honesty in all of these moments and, and make Ben's world and journey as believable as possible. And so, yeah, we did. A, we had a lot of different discussions and a lot of talks with Thomas about, you know, what this movie is. And I, I, I really love the tone we found in it. it has a, it's, it's this great mix of drama and comedy. Well, that's that's sort of an interesting point in and of itself. Was the casting sort of one of the things that helped you sort of dictate that ter tone? Because like Thomas Middleditch, who's excellent in the film, is a very um, unique and sort of amazing actor and it seems like if you had cast it you know um, in a very different way it could have spun the film in a different direction but he has that sort of like awkwardness and vulnerability that seemed to sort of really channel a lot of the film uh, is that sort of was that part of the process in sort of helping you figure out what tone you wanted for it or had you already sort of had that vision you're like this is the guy that's going to execute what we want yeah I had a pretty clear vision you know I talked a lot I want the ha film to have this sort of vinyl feel to it this sort of handmade feel to it and um, you know in the script Ben is is a very volatile emotional fragile character and um, when I'm casting films I really like to look at interviews with actors to see who they are innately as people as opposed to looking at their other work and um, I remember watching Thomas in this interview at the Sundance Film Festival uh, for a film called The Bronze and the interviewer asked him this question um, what's your favorite song and uh, and he started talking about neutral milk hotels the king of carrot flowers and he started bawling he started <laughs> crying and i was like wow that, like that fragility that emotional sensitivity is ben and it is thomas in a lot of ways you don't know if he's going to break up and start laughing or break up and start crying and and that's such a a unique quality that the character in this movie has and that Thomas has innately as a person and just was just really able to tap into that and play with that and um, I think it's a you know it's a it's a really great performance by Thomas and, and you get to see him in a way that you haven't before which is what I'm really excited about. 
Was there any sort of alteration to the script or whatever as the project went on once you had someone like Thomas to sort of make the character more unique to his voice? Or did he just straight play it as it was written on the script? I think Thomas very much sort of made the character his own and sort of looked through through the dialogue and, and the action and the reality of, of of what Ben was going through and very much made that his own. He's he's a really hard working actor. Like he's he takes his craft seriously and he you know, he's he's got this this great sort of obsession for just doing good work and, and if it whether it's in improv or comedy or drama, like he just takes it takes it as far as he can go and makes it uh, makes it feel real. So for for me there wasn't a lot of rewriting to fit him, but there was a lot of him finding finding the stuff that really drew him to the character and bringing out those elements as much as he could. Uh, he worked really hard on it, and it shows in his performance, I think. Yeah, he has, he has great taste, and he also holds a very high bar, which I think upped our game as well. And, um, and it, yeah, and was a great collaborator. You know, we would always be challenging the material, even moments before shooting a scene. We'd be just always working it. You know, always working it. How can it be better? How can we do this? How can we add this? And um, you know, it, he's a hard worker for sure. There's a lot of, I don't know what the best way to describe it is high concept ideas in this film. Uh, quantum entanglement, multiverses. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting sort of psychological questions that are at play. And I think that really raises this above a lot of other films that are sort of in the same drama sphere. Um, how is it to approach those kind of highbrow concepts when it could be like, do we have to explain this extensively? Do we, can we sort of gloss through this? Like, what is, what is the level of sort of like, educating the viewer that you feel like you have to in a film like this to make it sort of engaging and understandable as to what's going on. How much nerd did you put into the movie is There's what he's asking. There's so much nerd in this movie. <laughs> uh, I mean, a lot of it is just like things that I was interested in and things that I've always been in. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in science and quantum mechanics and, and that kind of stuff. And so, and, and just starting to see that as a way to relate human interaction and and this movie talks about some bigger issues about how we are connected to people and and the notion of of our lives you know being like a tapestry and how woven we are and that i feel like if you can look at that from something as concrete as physics i think there's a way to sort of explain these bigger issues but also i mean you know it's a way to talk around you know the real issues that Ben is having and for him I think I think for him diving into this kind of you know nerdy quantum stuff is is a bit of a way for him to avoid the more real issues in his life uh, without sort of saying exactly what they are I mean it's, it's an interesting perspective for you guys were you guys you know super into the science before and or was this something you guys sort of just picked up as the film went on or were you like okay let's let's look into this more as we sort of approach this production well jason james has a doctorate in physics so <laughs> yes i can explain that in 1935 <laughs> Perfect, einstein exactly. discovered the theory of quantum entanglement he described it as wow <laughs> spooky action at a distance <laughs> i did my research i was just joking <laughs> you sound cool. believable um yeah i mean there's also another science element of this movie in that um Ben suffers from uh, schizoaffective uh, yeah, the psychology. disorder, um, bipolar subtype, and so I, I actually Got real had specific a, there. No, well, I, I um, met with a doctor and I had her um, read the script and diagnose Ben, and then we sat down and we talked a lot about what sort of character traits would someone who has this mental illness, hmm. what would they exhibit, what medication are they on, what are the side effects of that medication. Ben stops taking his pills, so what are the side effects of when you're coming off the medication. And she talked a lot about facial tics and different ways that they walk because their, their um, muscles get very stiff on certain medication. And it was really interesting to kind of get inside of the character. And while the film is very magical, realist, and, and romantic and poetic, I also wanted the, 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 there to be a, a, a truth in, in his psychosis and, and how that manifested itself in the character. And for you, Amber, what was the process in terms of like trying to organize all this? There's a lot of like high <laughs> concepts. Were you? Did you have to like look into this before as you're sort of helping them put this all together? Same. Like, it yeah, like clearly. Magic. Well, they, they clearly there's an authentic uh, authenticity that he wants to achieve with the characters and stuff. Was mm -hmm. it something that you really had to work, um, just personally figuring it all out, just to make this, you know, scientifically accurate, get the people that they needed to sort of make these characters 
authentic? Like, what was that process like for you in terms of producing this? Uh, in terms of the scientific? Any, anything, just like, I mean, we're coming in, were you like, oh yeah, I understand all these concepts, I know all the people. <laughs> like, I mean, what did you have to do to sort of prepare yourself to help mm. them execute on this vision that they had? Uh, I don't think I was that familiar with the concepts, but I don't think that was the important thing. For me, it's such a visual film, and the entanglement mm. theory, I mean, it comes out visually, and it comes out emotionally, I think, in the film. So that, that had to, we had to stay true to that. Um, so visually, it's, it was a pretty ambitious film. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, it, there's yeah, a lot of stuff going challenge. on visually in this film. How did you guys sort of approach that? It seems like that is something that might have been uh, the first thing to go when you're putting together yeah. an indie film. Like, <laughs> it feels like that's like an easy expense to cut off the budget, but it does yeah. add sort of an extra element to the film. Yeah, I mean, I think we were in agreement of taking the approach that there's a couple big set pieces in this film, so we put a lot of effort and budget and time into making those elevate the film and making sure we did them properly, um, and then we could stretch the budget in other areas of the film. So that was one way of staying true to the visuals, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, that was excellent. Um, in terms of putting together this cast, like <laughs> there's some very interesting relationships at play, just to keep it nice and vague for people so that they can be surprised when they see it. What was it like in terms of sort of um, casting all those characters? I mean, Thomas is a very, as you said, very intense professional actor. So, like, I mean, everything I see him, I enjoy him. So I can understand why you would be willing to go with him. But how was it sort of like building around him? Was he the first domino? Did you have sort of a idea of how this was all going to come together? Like, what was that sort of developing that chemistry amongst them? Yeah, I mean, casting a movie is one of the most important parts one of the most important parts of making a film and um, you know I'm casting three movies right now and they've been a year-long process and um, but with this movie um, Thomas was the first person we went out to he responded to the material he and I hit it off we had some great creative conversations makes it a lot easier yeah <laughs> um, but but that just speaks to the level of um, the, the script you know I think good good stories always find a home unique stories always find a home and as narcissistic and fucked up as this business is like people <laughs> still need good stories to 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 make good movies Gosh, especially with this year of like <laughs> pirates five and transformers five and all that other stuff yes unique interesting stories are all the more in demand now for sure yeah. and then you know working with thomas and and our creative team we just kind of built a cast around him and um and yeah i talked a lot about chaos versus control in this film and and hannah represents chaos and tabby control and it was sort of and and how we all exhibit some of that inside ourselves and somehow finding the balance of that and um, and playing with those ideas in terms of production design, in terms of performance, in terms of how we approach the material, in terms of uh, shooting style in, in each of those characters' scenes. So it was a, a, a really rich world to play in for me. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so the film is playing here at SIF. Um, for people who are curious and want to see it, uh, is there a place they should go to get more information about it? Is there a, a specific release date or anything that they need to be aware of? What, what do you want people to know after they hear this? What do you want their action steps to be? What do you think? Do you want to take that one? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned it's going to be playing at a few festivals, right? Yeah, it's at the, we're opening the Brooklyn Film Festival in two weeks. Um, we're at the Madrid Film Festival as well. And we've got social media sites. We've got Instagram. We've got Facebook, Twitter pages to follow. Okay, so yeah. look it up on look there. It up, It'll give you the latest yeah, up-to-date stuff. There'll be more stuff. updates on festivals it's playing and release as well. Perfect. Thank you guys so much for this. And Thank I you. wish you the best of luck with the film. It's very interesting, unique, and entertaining. I guess Thanks. people absolutely should check it out. How many times did you watch it? Uh, only one so okay. far, but right. I'm planning right. on watching it backwards next just to see if that Brilliant. alters the way I do. Oh, I like <laughs> Thank it. you, guys. <laughs> Stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.